Aloha everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name's Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Ooh. Almost lost my balance. This is honestly a video I never ever expected to make. If you aren't familiar with me and my channel, I tend to be a little bit shady. I like to drag people, okay? I don't know, something about me just absolutely loves being shady, dragging people, but in a nice way, you know? Not, not in a bitchy way. And if you've seen any of my videos titled The Truth About, you will know that I have no hesitation whatsoever when it comes to dragging a brand or just products or something in general. And one request I've been seeing so much from you guys is for me to drag your your guys' skincare routines. And I remember the first time I saw this request, I was just like, no, absolutely not. Like, why would I do that? You guys are my subscribers, you're my babies. But I saw it being requested so many times and honestly, after a while, I was like, you know what? That's actually a pretty good idea. So here we are, a few days ago on Instagram, I posted asking you guys to send me your skincare routines, which by the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, bitch, why the fuck not? It's where I can connect best with you guys and you have unlimited blackmail potential from my Instagram stories, so you're welcome. But I was at the airport my flight was delayed for a while and I was like, okay, bitch, we're doing this. And not even 10 minutes after I posted that story, I had over 200 responses. Probably like 1200 responses in total. It's been nuts. You guys are crazy fucking amazing. But nonetheless, let's get into me bashing your guys' skincare routines. To give you guys context, I screenshotted these a while ago. And if you know anything about me or my memory, it's non-existent. I don't remember shit. So I don't remember what's in these messages, I will be just as surprised as you guys. Now, for time's sake, I'm not going to be able to critique every single product you guys have because I do not have the knowledge base. I don't know every single ingredient list of every single product out there. So I'm only really gonna be able to respond to the products that I do know of. All right, so I have the screenshots on my computer right here because I'm filming on my phone. Let's see. The first one is from Daisy. Micellar water, Eucelin oil control, micellar water, cleaning gel, Eucerin. You know, Eucerin is a great brand. I think it's very similar to CeraVe in the way that they formulate their products. And personally, I don't see a problem with the brand overall. Not gonna lie, Eucerin is just one of those brands that I tend to find is just a little boring. AHA Crave Beauty, yes, love Crave Beauty's exfoliant. Paula's Choice 2% BHA gel. Ooh, I haven't tried the gel before, but you're on the right track with Paula's Choice. An amazing company, all their products are fragrance free. They are honestly like one of my go-to resources for learning about ingredients. On the right track, serum, peach and lily glass skin serum. Ooh, so I have ordered this product. I'm waiting for it in the mail because so many of you guys won't stop freaking asking for it. And sleeping mask, aromatica sleeping mask. Ooh, I don't like to see the word aroma in any skincare brand because usually if it says aroma, that means it has an aroma. And how do we feel about fragrance? It's dog shit. But in reality, I am fine with having one or two products in my entire skincare routine formulated with a little bit of fragrance. So I don't know how much fragrance this product has. I would have to smell it to see. And it's something I also want to touch on. It was so difficult finding skincare routines to bash because you guys are smart motherfuckers. Like I was looking through all of the lists and I'm like, yes, yes, their skincare routines are perfect. These are all the products I've been recommending. They're paying attention. Honestly, I'm super proud of you guys because the majority were fragrance free or really good products that I've used in the past or have recommended. And it was really hard to find routines that were bashable. So good job for the majority of you guys. But there are some people in here that I'm like, bitch, what are you doing? Have a nice day, Hiram. Love ya. Aw, love you too, Daisy. Thank you. The next one is from someone called Nico. Hi, Nico. He says he has acne, acne stars, and combination skin. Now, I remember why I screenshotted his message. It was because for some of the products, not gonna lie, I don't know some of these products because it looks like they're German. I don't know if they are, but he listed out the ingredient list of each of the products, which I find to be really helpful. Cause like I said, I don't know everything. Shocking. I know, right? Like so shocking. So I'm able to read through these ingredient lists. Thank you for doing that. His cleansing oil. The first is sunflower seed oil. Absolutely love that oil. It's also formulated with a bunch of other good ingredients. No fragrance in the cleansing oil. Love that. The next one is the toner. Second ingredient is glycerin. Very hydrating. It also has cucumber fruit extract. Honestly, so far these products are really good. I'm shocked. Third product is is moisturizer, everything looks good. Damn, what brand is this? This brand looks really good, DM Deutschland. A lot of their products are fragrance free from what I've seen so far. So far, Nico, you're doing right. Ooh, but step six in the morning, he uses the Nivea Sun Sunscreen SPF 54 Sensitive Skin. Look at the ingredient list. The second ingredient is denatured alcohol. Eh. 
If you aren't familiar with denatured alcohol, it is a delivery agent. A lot of people really like it because it dissolves any excess sebum on the skin. It looks and feels really nice, very lightweight, but it's also a delivery agent for the protection factor of the sunscreen. But denatured alcohol is very stripping to the skin and can cause a lot of sensitivity. Overall, I just think it's a really cheap ingredient. And every time I find it on an ingredient list, if it's within the first five ingredients, I usually just avoid it altogether unless it's a really good formula. And the fact that it's a second ingredient, in my opinion, is just just too much. I think it's really dumb. I think they could have used better delivery agents at not as high of a percentage. So take that out of your skincare routine. Don't recommend. If you are looking for a good lightweight sunscreen, I would personally recommend the Purito. I forgot the name. I will have it right here. It's a mineral sunscreen, but it is one of the most lightweight sunscreens that I have ever used, but it isn't formulated with any stripping ingredients, which I definitely appreciate. And I recommend that for you as well. And because it is a mineral based SPF, it's usually more ideal for sensitive skin. Highly recommend that instead, but not too bad. Honestly, Honestly, that routine was mostly fragrance free. The only thing is that denatured alcohol, that bitch, she needs to go. Okay, this message is from Sydney. Hi, Sydney. She says, please bash my routine. I love your channel and you've helped me learn a lot, so I'll be changing it soon. Morning, nothing. Literally nothing. Don't use anything for the morning time. Okay. That needs to change pronto. There are so many skincare products out there, so many marketing claims, but the number one most important thing, if you were to do nothing else but this, you would have a good skincare routine. You absolutely have to wear sunscreen every single day, that is the most important thing. There is the most research backing up different things like aging within the skin and skin cancer. And to be honest, I always heard the things about skin cancer and why you should wear sunscreen. That really never affected me. But when I heard that 90% of premature aging is due to sun exposure alone, that freaked the fuck out of me and I instantly started wearing sunscreen. I know, super shallow, but hey, it worked. And I highly recommend you use a sunscreen. Just go to the drugstore and get a CeraVe sunscreen. Just literally just anything but nothing. Okay, thank you, next. For nighttime, Burt's Bees Soap Bark and Chamomile Deep Cleanser, Skin Food Peach Sake Emulsion, and Clinique 72 Hour Moisture Surge. Now, I have to say, I like the Clinique 72 Hour Moisture Surge. Definitely really hydrating. I've heard of the Skin Food Peach Sake Emulsion, but from what I remember, Skin Food does formulate with fragrance. Not personally a fan of that, but I would say um, using both the Emulsion and the 72 Hour Moisture Surge, that's like a lot of hydration and maybe a little bit too much, especially if you're not cleansing it out of your skin. Depends on your skin. You may have really dehydrated or dry skin, which is totally fine, but I'm like, I think you only need one of those products. And as far as Burt's Bees goes, I know some of you guys have been requesting it. I will be coming out with a video soon. So I'm gonna keep my thoughts on those products for that video. But overall, I would say if you are using Burt's Bees, probably the best products to use are their cleansing products instead of their leave-on products. And I'm just gonna keep it at that. The next message is from Kate. She says, I have oily acne prone skin and I use the ordinary salicylic acid and niacinamide and three times a week, I use the ordinary Granactive Retinoid 2% emulsion instead, okay? Then I moisturize with the iUnique Centella Calming Gel and the Centella Unscented Sunscreen from Purito. Oh, and she cleanses with the First Aid Beauty Cleanser. Okay, yep, this girl, she watches my videos. I know you do. It looks like it because I've talked about many of these products. Also, I just want to say that I love your channel so much. You've helped my skin no end, and I'm so happy for you reaching 200,000. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I know, 200,000. <laughs> crazy. So honestly, I love all of these products. She's doing really, really good. Um, the only thing I would bash is that sometimes using salicylic acid and niacinamide together can be a little bit too drying to the skin. Salicylic acid is known for being really drying and niacinamide also controls sebum production within the skin and they both kind of operate similarly to each other. So I would say if you are to use one, just use one and hint, I don't think the ordinary is making their salicylic acid serum anymore or they haven't for a long time. So just stay on that niacinamide train and if you need to add another product, I would say add the Polish Choice 2% BHA liquid. It's the most similar product I've been able to find to the ordinary salicylic acid serum. But honestly, Honestly, besides that, girl, you're doing well. I love this skincare routine. I think it's great. See what I'm talking about? There's not much to bash here because you guys have freaking amazing skincare routines. That's the problem I'm facing. Okay, so the next one is from Feike, I think. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's what's there. She says, I have dry teenage skin with breakouts. CeraVe hydrating cleanser. Good, love CeraVe. CeraVe moisturizing cream, yes, also very good. And Biore UV Watery Essence Sunscreen. Oh, hell no. I know I'm gonna be dragged to filth for this because literally like almost every YouTube skincare creator that I know absolutely loves this essence. I'm looking at you, James Welsh, but I think it's just shit. The reason why, if you look at the ingredient list, the second ingredient is ethanol. Ethanol is very similar to denatured alcohol, but in some ways, in my opinion, a little bit worse. It tends to be way stripping to the skin 
skin and sensitizing it can cause an inflammatory response, which is never good because you never want your skin to be irritated, particularly when it comes to the sunscreen step of the skincare routine. Now, is ethanol necessarily a bad ingredient? No, it's actually in one of my favorite sunscreens, the Crave Beauty Beat Shield sunscreen, but it's listed pretty low on the ingredient list and alongside of plethora of really hygienic ingredients that I know is going to keep my skin's hydration level at bay. Similar to denature alcohol, ethanol is a delivery agent for sunscreens. But the fact that it is the second ingredient in this product made me never, ever, ever want to use it. I literally have almost bought it twice, but both times I've looked at the ingredient list and I'm like, huh, no, get it, get it off my screen. I know people are gonna hate me, but girl, find something else. Like I was saying before, I personally would recommend the Crave Beauty Beat Shield. I just think it would be a really good sunscreen for you because it seems like you have more dry skin based off of the fact that you use a hydrating cleanser and a moisturizing cream. Another thing I wanna bash about this routine, I think you need a treatment in this skincare routine because it looks like you have cleansing, hydration, and sunscreen covered, but you need something that's gonna be able to help those breakouts in your skin. And right now it's not looking like anything is helping with that. I think you would be justified in using a salicylic acid treatment, but just exfoliation in general would be really good. I personally would recommend trying out the Use to the People 11% Power Toner. It's a great way of getting all different types of exfoliation on your skin, but it's formulated in a way that's really good for sensitive skin or people who are just kind of getting into exfoliation. Or if you want something a little bit more low maintenance, but you don't have sensitive skin, I would recommend the Ordinary AHA 30% Solution. It's an amazing once a week mask that really bulldozes through all the dead skin cells on your face, but really gently and effectively. With some types of exfoliation, my skin is a little bit sensitive, but I've never had a problem with this product and I highly recommend it, especially for the price point. Next up, I think her name is Miali, I think. I'm sorry about these pronunciation guys. I mean, you guys should know, I pronounce products and ingredients wrong all the time, so I'm not gonna be any better with your names. So she says, my skincare routine, I don't have one. Why the fuck are you following me? On the real though, I have to say, I'm really impressed that you are watching my videos because I would never want to watch my videos if I wasn't interested in skincare. I would just say that's the YouTube algorithm doing the Lord's work. I don't know, some people have approached me and told me that they have no interest in skincare but watch my videos and I'm like, Really? Because I'm not that interesting. But boo, let me get a skincare routine for you. Instead of like going through the entire process of explaining everything about skincare, you can actually just go over to the Skincare Junkie website that I created. It's an entire community where you can get answers to skincare problems or questions that you have. But there's a specific course that I created that talks about the four basic steps of every skincare routine. The only four steps that you need in order to help perfect your skin. I'll link it down below, but I highly recommend you go and take that course. And to anyone else who is watching this video and who does not have a skincare routine, bitch, you should get on that. Thank you, Miali. Okay, next up is from Sasha. She says, Nighttime Crave Beauty Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. Yes, ordinary glycolic acid every other day. I'm guessing that's the glycolic acid toner. I personally didn't like the results that I saw within my skin, but I love the ordinary, love their products, good to go. Aloe vera gel on damp skin. Ooh, like straight aloe vera gel? Okay, so I have a little bit of a problem with this um, for two different reasons. In a previous video, I talked about how using straight aloe vera on the skin can have some negative side effects, and I regret using the word carcinogen. <laughs> I think a lot of people interpreted my message to say that al using aloe vera on your face causes cancer. That's not what I'm saying. There's just certain components within al aloe vera that at certain concentrations can be considered carcinogenic. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely love aloe vera, but I was just using that to make a point that anything can be cancerous, anything can be dangerous, doesn't matter whether it's natural or a chemical, anything can be bad. But I would say using straight aloe vera on your face every day, I personally wouldn't recommend that, not only because I think you can get a lot better benefits with a skincare formula that has a high concentration of aloe vera extract. I also question the stability of using aloe vera. Like, I guess if you are literally like scraping it from the leaf every single day, Yes, there can be a benefit, but you also don't necessarily know the environment of the aloe vera plant, you know, what types of bugs have been on it, what other things could cause potential sensitivities within your skin. Overall, I think you are better with using a product, but I do understand that if nothing else works, some people like to just use straight aloe vera, and I respect that, but I wouldn't do it. Rosehip oil, retinoid 1%. Okay, you're going in with those actives, love that. Um, the morning, wash the face with water, aloe vera gel on damp skin, okay. Hmm. Oh, CeraVe PM moisturizer in the morning? I am Confucian. Um, interesting. 
Huh. Well, usually I would recommend using like an AM moisturizer. A lot of times PM moisturizers can have active ingredients that can make your skin more sensitive to the sun. I don't remember the CeraVe one off the top of my head, but at least you're using CeraVe, that's good. Oh, and then she follows up with an AM moisturizer that has SPF, wow. Aloe vera and two CeraVe moisturizers, that, that's a lot. Green, you're using a moisturizer that has sunscreen in it. Now, a lot of times these moisturizers can tend to be less protective than a standalone sunscreen product because people use a lot less moisturizer that has sunscreen in it than using a straight up sunscreen, which means less sun protection, which is literally the most important part of the skincare routine. Especially if you are using a retinoid and a PM moisturizer, I would definitely recommend following up with a standalone sunscreen product. That way you can ensure you're getting the most protection possible. I doubt I'll get picked, but I love your videos so much. I'm like an OG baby when you had like 5,000 subscribers. Wow, way back when. Well, I guess that wasn't way back then. That was like six months ago, but that was still a while ago. And it's so amazing seeing you grow so much. You deserve it. Keep up the good ass work, boo. Oh, thank you. That was such a sweet message. Thank you so much. This is so much fun. I love dragging you guys. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I just like being able to like see your guys' messages to me because I wish I had time. I wish I had time to respond to every single one of you guys, but I just don't and it kills me kills me inside. So this is from Ellie. Hi, Ellie. She says, I have oily skin and I'm a teenager. So acne, by the way, it varies, but normally I take off my makeup with my cellar water. Good. Love my cellar water. Good double cleanse. Cleanse either Neutrogena grapefruit wash or Aveeno gentle foaming cleanser. Okay. Um, any product that has citrus in the title, I just recommend avoiding. Citrus extracts are irritating to the skin. And while a lot of people say that they have like exfoliating benefits, I just recommend vo avoiding them altogether. There are way better ingredients that do a much better job of exfoliating your face. So anytime you see like lemon, lime, grapefruit, orange, anything like that in a skincare product, run the fuck away. But I think the Aveeno Gentle Foaming Cleanser is good. Put the Neutrogena Spot Treatment on any acne. Okay. Um, tone with tea tree water from Lush. Ooh, nope, nope, nope. Don't get me wrong, I think they're incredible from a help the world standpoint, but I don't recommend any of their face products. They just have way too much fragrance in them. I would say maybe try the Body Shop, see what they have. Their Tea Tree Cleanser is definitely a better option or using their Tea Tree Spot Treatment. I think both of those are good and you're also supporting a really ethical company as well. Pretty good routine, definitely ditch the Grapefruit Cleanser, but Neutrogena is not a bad brand. They have a lot of good products and I love that you're following up with SPF. A lot of teenagers who do struggle with acne believe that like exposing your skin into the sun will help the acne. Not true at all. I'm glad to see you're using sunscreen. Okay, so this one is from Ella. She said, drag me, please. <laughs> she uses the chamomile balm from the body shop to remove makeup. Okay, that's a good one to go with. I like the ingredient list of that product. The Kate Somerville cleanser. I'm guessing it's the exfolicate cleanser because that's our most popular one. Um, not a fan not necessarily because of the ingredients. I do think you can see really good results from that cleanser, but going in with that strong of an exfoliating cleanser every single day is just way too harsh for the skin, in my opinion. Cleansing should be a very gentle step, and then you can follow up with an exfoliating treatment afterwards. And combining those two things is just not a good idea. So I recommend getting a different cleanser and just following up with a good exfoliating treatment. If you wanna see some of my favorites, feel free to go to my Skincare 101 series. I've linked it in the description box below. I talk about how to cleanse, how to exfoliate, and all the favorite ones that I found in the past. Mario Badescu Cucumber Toner. I know you feel, but I use it for a more aroma experience. Oh, she knows she's guilty. Fragrance does not belong in your skincare, and I know that some products smell amazing, but if anything, buy that product and then just lift it to your nose in the morning, just smell it, and then set it back down. Don't do anything else with it. <laughs> and then final step, distilled coconut oil. And I know it's bad for my skin, but it's genuinely the one thing my skin hasn't to reacted to because it's so sensitive. Okay, yeah, I do remember why I screenshotted this. I've dragged coconut oil so much on my channel. You guys know I hate it. I just don't think it's a good oil for the face. But I will say, it's not the worst thing out there. And for some people, coconut oil is really the only thing that works. And while research has shown that coconut oil can be very comedogenic, it can block your pores, it's just not the best oil out there, for people with really, really, really dry or really, really, really sensitive skin, sometimes it's the only thing that works. And honestly, if it works for you, good. Keep going with it. I don't want anyone to purposely like break out or damage their skin simply because of something that I said. If something like coconut oil is working for you, then stick with it, boo. You know, it's working good for you. My resolution this year is to get a good skincare routine and a consistent one, so please help. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. I love that that's one of your goals. And then for the final one, it's actually from a small skincare influencer that I have been enjoying so 
so much. His Instagram is 43 year old skin influencer. He also has a YouTube channel. Feel free to go follow him. I have to say, I was so impressed by how many responses I was seeing from guys. My channel viewership, about 90% of the people who watch are females and only 10% are male. But I was so shocked by how many guys were sending me their skincare routines. It's so amazing to see more guys getting into skincare and understanding how important it is. But he actually posted his skincare routine and tagged me in it. So the first product is the Jack Black Pure Clean Daily Facial Cleanser. Jack Black overall, I'm not crazy about the brand, but I would say if you're gonna use a product from them, use their cleanser because any irritating ingredients are not gonna be left on your skin for a long period of time. The next one is the I'm From Rice Toner. I love this because it shows that he is into Korean skincare. I recently got the Rice Toner and I'm so freaking excited to use it, but I'm From is one of those brands where the quality of their ingredients is just mwah. It's so good, and even though some of their products have irritating ingredients, I justify it a little bit because their products are really good. Primera Miracle Seed Essence, yes. My favorite essence of all time. So good, love that product. Next is the Lancome Genifique Serum. Rodney, you were doing so good. I'm gonna be doing a video on Lancome because you guys request it like crazy, but I will say not a fan of this serum, not a fan of the, a lot of their products. They tend to formulate with some of the most irritating ingredients overall. And a lot of people like them because with some of their serums, for example, you see amazing short-term effects, but in the long run, it's actually damaging your skin. Um, and I remember using the serum, wasn't crazy about the ingredients, just not a fan overall. And then he follows up with the double duty face moisturizer with SPF 20 from Jack Black. Um, from what I remember, I think he's located in California, um, in an area where he gets a lot of sun exposure. To be honest, um, with the amount of sun exposure he's getting, I think he needs a lot more sunscreen than that. Personally, I think SPF 30 is the lowest that you should go, the absolute lowest. Like I was saying before, usually with moisturizers, people feel justified in using less, which means they get less sun protection. So I think he definitely needs a separate sunscreen. And in addition to that, that moisturizer is also formulated with multiple irritating essential oils, which I'm personally not a fan of. I think I remember lavender and rosemary oil. And so I just don't think it's that great of a product follow up with a moisturizer and then a sunscreen afterwards. The ones that I've mentioned in this video are amazing, but because you're into Korean skincare, if you wanna try a really good one, I recommend the Dear Claire's Soft UV Airy Essence. It does have some fragrance, but it is just so good. One of the most lightweight sunscreens, it feels like you're wearing nothing on your skin. All right, and that is it, man. I could literally do that all day long. I just wanna say real quick, thank you guys so much for all of your messages. Some of you put so much time, effort, and thought into your messages to me, and I want to just thank every one of you for doing so. You guys inspired the hell out of me. And while I've been so hesitant to film this video because I'm like, you guys are my subscribers, I do not wanna drag you. You guys are the last people I wanna drag. I think this was a lot of fun and I really am looking forward to doing it in the future. Feel free to follow me on Instagram if you haven't already and send me your skincare routine so that I can react to it in a future video. And if you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Mwah.